All right, guys, so you guys know that we use a lot of AHP welders in some of our videos. Uh, a lot of you guys have them at home. I mean, they're great starters for beginners as well as, you know, certain industrial settings. The one thing that we don't like is the foot pedal, and we've kind of heard that through a lot of the comments that uh, you guys really aren't fond of the, the pedal and you ask for our opinions. I can tell you I'm not really fond of this uh, either, you know, coming from a background using a traditional foot pedal makes life a little bit easier. This thing's a little awkward, cumbersome, uh, kind of light, slips out from underneath your feet while you're trying to weld, uh, and it's just difficult to kind of get your placement right. So we kind of scoured the, uh, the internet and we come across a couple different ideas, how people are retrofitting these and, and different applications to, to make this better, more manageable. So we actually, one of the ideas that uh, we seen was on Instagram from Stratford Welding and Fabrication. We kind of liked his idea. So we're gonna go ahead and run with that and show you guys how to make that. So the first thing we're gonna do, uh, obviously this is unplugged. Uh, you don't wanna be messing with anything electrical or anything with wires or cables while it's electrically hot. So we have this uh, piece unplugged. We're gonna go ahead and take it apart and we're gonna see what the internal workings are because what I'd like to do is once we place this shell over here, uh, we're going to have to drill a couple holes in order for that to stay in place. So we're gonna go ahead and open this up. All right, so we have the internal components taken out. It looks like I have some areas right up here underneath where that, that bar is where I can actually put a bolt through here. It looks about maybe quarter inch or five sixteenths. And that's just kind of going to hold the shell on the outside for us. So we're going to go ahead, uh, lay everything out on the aluminum. Uh, this is something you guys can get in your big box stores, you know, so uh, just pop in there. You know, they usually have a small sheet metal section. Uh, you really don't need a whole lot to do this. Just a couple small pieces. I measured out eight inches by four inches for the, uh, the left side, right side, and the top piece. And then we're just going to trim the, the two sides down and kind of radius that end. All right, so to lay this out, we went ahead and made the top plate eight inches by four inches because the width of, or the length of this foot pedal is eight inches long, it's four inches wide. And then as far as the height, uh, I just pulled a quick measurement, it's right around three and a half. So we made four inches there as well because I want a little bit of clearance between the, the piece that we're making and the actual foot pedal. So that way when we rotate it uh, back and forth, uh, it's gonna be able to clear everything. All right, guys, so we got everything laid out. We're gonna go ahead and cut this piece out now at home. Um, I know most of you don't have a CNC plasma cutter, so we're going to go ahead and dial this back and do it old school. We're going to use a cutoff wheel, but feel free if you have a plasma cutter, handheld or mechanized, go ahead and use that. I mean, power shears will probably get you through this, I mean, even aviation snips. So any one of those options, anything that's going to be able to cut the material for you, and you don't have to use uh, aluminum diamond plate. I mean, it's just something we had laying around. Like I said, you can get it at the big box stores. You can use solid steel, you know, if you want to get all fancy with it, you can do stainless. I like the tread plate because that's going to give me a little bit of grip for when I go ahead and use that foot pedal. I got some texture to it. We're going to go ahead and use a Weiler Tiger Aluminum. It's a non-loading disc specifically designed to cut aluminum. So let's go ahead and cut it. Hey, camera guy, why don't you set some badass cutting music for this scene? Oh yeah, man, no problem. All right, so we have everything cut out. Um, what I'm gonna do is I, I've picked the best or the better of the two sides, cleaned it up a little bit. What I'm gonna do is just lay these two together and uh, capture them side by side and just, that way the, I'm gonna grind these out and then I can match the profile. That way they're symmetrical. See how we cut it out with a cutoff wheel, it's not the most accurate way to cut something out, but I can go ahead and clean that up with a Zerk wheel as I'm detailing these pieces out. I can go ahead and contour to make them completely symmetrical with one another. Um, that way, you know, they'll rotate and pivot on the same point. I'll have the same area up here to be able to weld these in place on the top of the pedal and we'll get this all cleaned up and then we're going to go ahead and weld it out. All right. So I got some of the preliminary cleaning done with the Zerk wheel. However, as you guys know, those wheels are pretty aggressive. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of clean off the remaining burr, smooth everything out with a file. And I just want to show you guys a cool little trick. So if you take a piece of soapstone and rub it on that file, back and forth and just get like a good coating on there. This kind of acts as like a, a cutting lubricant and it also helps prevent the, uh, the file from becoming loaded with the material you're trying to remove. So periodically, I mean, sidewalk chalk does really good, but I mean, we got soapstone laying all over in the shop. Use a piece of soapstone, just kind of fill in those little nooks and crannies. And then when you go to 
clean off these edges. It'll, it'll keep the, uh, the material from building up in between the, the, uh, the teeth of the file. And it also makes for a much smoother cut. We're gonna go ahead and clean this up, wipe it down with some acetone, then we're gonna go ahead and weld it out. So basically right now I'm gonna clean the inside of this material as well as the outside. Even though I'm gonna do an outside corner joint, I still wanna clean up the inside where I'm gonna be welding as well because if I don't, oh, through that gap, I can pull contaminants from the other side. So I've got a stainless steel wire brush marked for aluminum only. This tells me later on, hey, don't use this on steel or anything like that. So I'm gonna clean the inside and outside up and then we'll go ahead, I'm gonna tack it, I'm gonna put like a little heat sink on the back and then we'll go ahead and weld it out. All right, so what we're gonna do now is I'm just gonna put a couple small tacks throughout this piece, that way it holds everything together. Material tends to uh, warp and move, gaps tend to open up, so I'm just gonna go ahead and put some tacks on here and then we'll go ahead and fill in the blanks and we'll just run right across. We're gonna use 80 amps. Um, I probably won't use all that, that's just the, the capacity, that's where I'm set at on the machine. About 65% balance on the AC, which should give us some pretty decent results. We're gonna go ahead and get this welded out. All right, so now we're welding this out. I know I have the machine set at 80 amps. I think I'm actually only using about 52 though. So as we go through here, I'm just watching that you know puddle fill in, uh, dipping the rod, moving along the joint, pushing everything along you know the way it's supposed to. We put a little piece of angle behind there because I've got acts as a heat sink, but it's also going to help the material stay in place, keep the material from splitting open, and just make it a little bit easier to weld. So now in this area, we're just going to go ahead and drill a couple holes for the bolts so that we can mount the, the foot pedal back to the, uh, the shell when we're done. Just scribing these out so we can transfer the marks over and then we'll drill it. We did an eighth inch, eighth inch pre-drill and then a quarter inch final drill. Now here we're just going to cut a little strip out so we have a little bit of reinforcement for our, to attach the pedal our, to our, our new shell. Just something simple. We're not building a rocket ship here. We'll go ahead and drill these out and then pop rivet them in. We could have welded them, but I figured, you know, because we're going into a cast aluminum pedal and then we're putting that shell on, it's just easy to pop rivet both of them in there. All right, guys, this concludes our AHP foot pedal retrofit. Make sure to stay tuned after this episode for the new HelpMeWeld.com segment. All right, so today's sample is submitted from Adam Brennan. And it looks like he's doing some gas tungsten arc welding on aluminum. Looks like he's doing a flat bead on plate. So the first thing I would recommend, Adam, is clean your material, right? Um, looks like you got some severe oxides going on in here, so try to use a stainless steel wire brush. Brush in one direction so you're not cramming those oxides and those uh, layers of contaminant back into the soft material. Another thing, it looks like you're going, you've got some excessive heat going on here. So I'm just going to take a stab in the dark and say you're probably using about eighth, in, eighth inch material. I would run that about 125 amps, 330 second tungsten, and a number eight cup, 15 CFH on the argon. Uh, you do have some crater cracks in, in here. So one thing I would recommend when you're terminating your weld, try to cram a little bit more filler metal in there and then taper off the pedal a little bit easier. So a slight taper off the pedal, add more filler metal and that's gonna help uh, alleviate those crater cracks. And I mean, just keep practicing. You know, it looks like you've got a decent start so far. Um, maybe add a little bit more cleaning action on your balance. So depending on which type of machine you have, I would spend a little bit more time on uh, DC positive because it doesn't look like you have thick material, so you don't need a whole lot of penetration. So run a little bit more towards a positive cycle uh, so you get some more cleaning action. That'll bring up a lot more of those oxides for you. Uh, speed up and just watch your amperage. All right, Adam, well, I hope that helps you along on your journey. Um, please keep us posted in the comment section of your original post. Let us know how you're doing. You can keep us up to date. Uh, we can provide more feedback as we'll be participating in the Facebook page more frequently. Uh, if you guys wanna be featured, make sure to you know, join our Facebook group and you can also use hashtag helpmeweld.com on Instagram. Till next time, make every weld better than your last. <laughs> <laughs>